kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, So um, is uh, now kind of looking from an you know overview. Do you see like Section Eight rentals increasing, you know, across Michigan or, or nationwide? Is that is it becoming more prevalent? Do you know? Say that again. Sorry. Just wondering if there are more and more Section Eights, you mm -hmm. know, uh, coming to fruition. You know, it, it, everybody's having you know tougher times yeah. now, pending recession. Uh, do you see any any kind of trend lines as more people are renting and using Section Eights? I can't say that I I do or not because I I don't have the numbers on those. Okay. Um, I'm just but, wondering if it's like more people will um, identify what a Section Eight is or apply right. for a Section Eight. You know, making a greater demand for maybe a limited supply. There, there's always going to be government assistance. Think of it like the SNAP program, which is like food stamps. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it's a, just another program just like that. You know, you still have to qualify. You still have to do all of that. You know, you go through the rigorous process, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but the good thing for landlord is that you have to screen your tenants in the beginning. The hardest thing is when something happens and you have to evict them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, that's the hardest thing because they can be what's called a professional tenant or um, they can, they, uh, yeah, what's a pro professional tenant or what they can do is they're just gone on hard times. And sometimes it's just easier instead of evicting them, just working with them, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So, um, you know, there are, so Michael, um, or as was saying, um, more places are now accepting section eight that previously were not. Okay. Um, and so with that, uh, he was also saying that, you know, section eight is strictly for renters. Okay. So when we were talking about land contracts and things like that, they, that none of that will happen. Um, so they're only strictly for renters and specifically they, they act as a mediator between the landlord and the tenant. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, and then I, I agree to that with an extent, not necessarily a mediator, but they, they act as what's called a, um, they subsidize the rent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like say food stamps you get subsidized with food stamps based on your income. Okay. Based on what you think you can afford and things like that. The more you make, the less money you get. And then all of a sudden you make too much money and you just don't qualify. Mm -hmm. so. Do students qualify for a section eight? You know, because they uh, hey, I'm in school, I don't have time to work a lot. I have a part-time job. So they can, but it, I think they go by the same rule that's like FAFSA does, where um, if you're under the age of 24 and your parents are still taking care of you, I guess uh, they can count. They, they have to count the parents' income. You see what I'm saying? So yes. that's how. Yeah. So uh, I so think that age limit is 24. Well, at least for FAFSA, for for yeah. like student aid. So right. I, I now for Section Eight, I don't know the 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 limits on that. Um, and if your parents are low income, then that doesn't matter. So, mm -hmm. um, but that is a definitely a question for like Section Eight um, themselves. I, so, as a landlord, you mm -hmm. shouldn't need to care about any of that. As a landlord. Mm -hmm. 
All you care about is the voucher and are they going to pay their bills on time? Are they going to keep the house clean? Are they going to do all this? So you look at the references, you look at the, they, they're going to have bad credit no matter what, but how, um, you know, how, you know, in, in the last six months, are they at least paying all their other bills? You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, if they're constantly just like 30 days late or something, but they're still paying the bills, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Uh, Anique was saying that uh, I had a tenant who lost their Section 8 voucher uh, three months into the lease because she lied and lied about her income on Section 8 application. So, which that so sucks. What does yeah. So what does the landlord yeah. do in that situation? So they still signed a lease. They're still responsible for that. So, um, wow. you know, okay. either they got, either they got to pay up or they, you have to go through the eviction process. Okay. So Anique, what did you do? Uh, let me know what in the comments, what you did, did for that tenant. Did you uh, have to evict them or did they ended up coming, uh, ponying up the actual money for the rent? So, but uh, yeah, so that's, it, it's crazy. You know, having friends like these guys in, in the chat, you know, yeah. they have experience. So, and that's the thing, um, you know, it's, oh, eviction. He, he came back, said eviction. So, oh. um, yeah. yeah three months double edged sword a little bit it, oh it three three months for them to figure or figure out she lied it was crazy <laughs> that's wow. that's crazy yeah. Yeah. so so randy every uh, city's different every city is yeah. different on evictions too so so what what do you think uh if there is an advantage to using section eight do you think you can get higher you know uh, lease rates you know, yeah, see, somebody else is paying part of it or why, why go yes. through that trouble? Yeah, no problem. So you can get higher rents with Section 8 because it's based off of the average area. It's based off the area. OK, mm -hmm. so, you know, the good thing is, is that they're going it, they're going to be the highest rents that you can mm -hmm. get. Like, for instance, you can get a three bedroom, you know, for in Detroit, they care about whether it's brick or frame houses, but outside Detroit, they don't. Okay. Their rents are the same. So it just depends on like three bedroom. You, you're probably going to get um, like $1,500 a month, you know, 15 to 18, depending on the area. So, it, you know, the more, the, the more North you are, the better you can become. So, um, do you think it's, uh, what they're, uh, yeah, so to Mark, based on like square footage of home or number of bedrooms or it's it's number of bedrooms and, and a little bit with the square footage, but mainly the number of bedrooms. So if you got okay. one big bedroom and you're modifying the house, you make the one big bedroom into two small ones. Yeah, exactly. So, well, yes and no, they still got to be pretty decent. So decent. Yeah. and and they still got to remember you got to pass city inspection you mm -hmm. got to pass uh section 8 inspection they have rules on what is a bedroom okay okay and how big a bedroom should be so um anique was saying it all depends on where the house is i wouldn't get higher rent for a property with section 8 so i strictly work with cash tenants so like for instance in detroit <clears throat> you're probably going to get higher rents in the suburbs. You might not, mm -hmm. you might get more higher rents with a cash tenant. So it really just depends on the area. So, um, you know, also landlords, uh, get the tenants who will not destroy the property when they, <laughs> when, when it's, for the <laughs> department. yeah, I, I agree with that, Michael. So, the, the thing is, is that you have, like I said, you have to screen the tenants money and you can screen the tenants all you want, but guess what? People lie, you know, people lie and, and you have to come up with your own ways to figure out how to get that. And sometimes that's the reason why I, I want to, 
I don't want to say I push it off to a, a, a property uh, manager, but that's essentially what I'm going to be saying I'm doing. Um, I want to put that on them, but then I want to, I want to oversee what they're doing to make sure that they're doing it right. What I mean by that is, is in the beginning, I'm going to make sure that they are doing what they said they're going to do and things are going through properly. Um, basically I'm going to be watching like a hawk until they gain my trust. That's just how it goes. So, so getting just back like to doing the, business with anywhere, yeah. just like doing business with anybody. <laughs> yeah. You know? so, so getting back to, uh, is there an advantage to doing a section eight as opposed to just a, a, a cash tenant? Depends off on the, the top area. Of your head? Depends on the area. Because the thing is, is that like, for instance, if you go inside Detroit proper, uh, you know, I would probably do a section eight because they don't want to lose that section eight voucher yep. by getting evicted. Now you go in the suburbs, depending on where you are in the suburbs, it might be advantageous not to do a section eight. Yeah. So, so, so I'm thinking, yeah, you wouldn't do want to do a section eight, like in Clarkston, uh, better correct. schools, higher income, but maybe yep. Pontiac or water, some Waterford areas, you might be inclined to do a section eight or accept exactly. a section eight tenant. Exactly. Hey, Pontiac is a great example because Pontiac is just like Detroit. Okay. And, and I guess yep. it wouldn't matter if it's a, a home or if it's a condo or if it's an apartment building or Section 8. So, so up or anything. yeah, so they, it, it just has to be a, a dwelling that you own. Like you can't be, you can't rent a place and try to sublet it, sublet it to a tenant. You have to be the owner. Okay. okay. Um, now I'm not sure what the rules are on condos. You have to look at when you do condos, HOAs have their own rules too. You have to follow. I got you. So you got to keep that in mind. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room